Drawing fire in Illustrator can be a bit challenging as you need to be somewhat familiar with the pen tool. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years and in this Envatotas Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this flame shape using the pen tool, how to color it and further stylize it and eventually how to turn it into this fireball logo. As usual, before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements, where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. That's millions of creative assets, all ready to use and with a simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Now let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu. Set the width to 850 and the height to 800 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can create your new document. For the beginning, let's open all the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. Go to window in the menu bar and open all the panels that have this check mark. Make sure that the control panel is also active and then let's enable the grid by going to view and show grid. Also enable the snap to grid feature. And for this tutorial you need a grid line every 5 pixels so let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Just enter 5 in this grid line every box and click OK. Now if you press Ctrl and plus to zoom in on your design, you can notice that you have a grid line every 5 pixels. Let's continue with the ellipse tool, so select it from your toolbar. Simply click on your artboard to create a 220 pixel circle. Keep this shape selected and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard. And then just click these two buttons to easily move your circle to the center of the artboard. Let's remove the stroke color, select the fill and replace the white with black. Lower the opacity of your circle to 10 pixels and let's switch to the pen tool. You can hold down the control key and click outside your circle to deselect it. And now let's start creating the flame shape from this point. Click and drag the handle 70 pixels down. And keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 70 pixels. Once you're done, release the mouse button and continue with the second point in this location. Again, click and drag the handle 60 pixels to the left. Move up to the left edge of your circle and add the third point in this location. Again, click and drag the handle 70 pixels up. Continue 90 pixels up and 50 pixels to the right. Don't forget to have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to the desired location. Just click once to add the new point. You can also press Shift and X to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Now move 90 pixels down and only 10 pixels to the right. Click and drag the handle 60 pixels to the right like this. Go up 130 pixels and 20 pixels to the left. When you get to the desired location, click and drag the handles 50 pixels up. Keep going up 70 pixels and 40 pixels to the right. Just click once to add a new point and then click and drag this handle 40 pixels down and 20 pixels to the left. And finally click the starting point and remember to drag the handle 70 pixels down like this. This will be your starting flame shape. Let's select it using the selection tool. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in the same place. You can press again Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings for this copy. Move to the control panel and make sure that this constraint button is checked and then lower the height of your selected copy to 155 pixels. Move to the Layers panel and drag this copy to the bottom of the panel and make it invisible because you'll only need it a bit later. Reselect the pen tool, 
and start a new shape from this point. Simply click and drag these handles 110 pixels up. Keep going up to 220 pixels and 80 pixels to the left. When you get to this point, click and drag the handles 80 pixels up. You can press again Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Click this point and then go down 110 pixels and only 20 pixels to the right. Again, click and drag these handles 85 pixels down and 55 pixels to the right. And then you can click the starting point to close your path. For the next shape, you need to start from this point and count 20 pixels to the right and then 25 pixels down. Simply click and drag to add a new point and drag the handles 55 pixels down and 35 pixels to the left. Continue 60 pixels down and 35 pixels to the right. Just click once to add a new point and then click and drag to drag this one handle 25 pixels down and 20 pixels to the left. Move up 20 pixels and go 75 pixels to the left. Click and drag these handles 40 pixels up and then you can close this shape. Now you can move to the Layers panel to select the three shapes that make up your flame shape. Merge them using the Unite button from the Pathfinder panel. Continue with the Direct Selection tool and use it to select just this point. And set the corners radius to about 20 pixels. You can deselect your flame shape, select the stroke and replace the black with a red. Reselect the pen tool from your toolbar and let's create a few more shapes which will add the 3D look for your flame shape. You can start the first one from this point. Go 35 pixels down and 25 pixels to the right. Click and drag the handles 25 pixels to the right and 15 pixels down. And then you can close this shape making sure that you will not get over the edges of the flame. Once you're done, you can continue with the second shape, which will start from this point. Go 30 pixels down and click and drag the handles of this new point 15 pixels down and 10 pixels to the right. Then go 40 pixels to the right and 10 pixels up to add the third point. And then again, you can close this shape, making sure that you will not get over the edges of your flame. Moving to the final shape, you need to start it from this point. Go 60 pixels down and click and drag the handles of this new point 25 pixels down and 15 pixels to the right. And then again, let's close this shape without getting over the edges of the main flame shape. Once you're done, you need to select these three shapes and press again Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the fill and replace the color with 240, 90 and 35. And then you need to turn these shapes into a compound path by going to Object, Compound Path, and Make. Select your main flame shape and press Ctrl C to copy it, and then Ctrl Shift and V to add a copy in the same place but on top of your existing shapes. Keep it selected and add the compound path to your selection, and then click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. You can press Ctrl Shift and G to ungroup the resulting group of shapes and Ctrl Plus to zoom in on your selection. Grab the ellipse tool and use it to create a 70 pixel circle. Use the selection tool to place this ellipse in this exact location. Replace the fill color with 193, 39 and 45. Lower the opacity of this ellipse to 75%. Now select this shape and press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Keep this copy selected and hold down the shift key to add to your selection this circle. And just click the intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. Reselect the ellipse tool and this time use it to create a 25 pixel circle. Let's move it in this position. Select this orange shape and add a copy in front. Select this copy along with your circle and this time click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. 
you can press Ctrl and 8 to turn this group of ships into a single compound pad. And then you can hold down the Alt key and simply click and drag this target icon on top of the target icon that stands for your selected shape to easily transfer the appearance settings from this shape to the one that you have selected. Grab again the ellipse tool and use it to create a 90 pixel circle. Remember to lower the opacity to 75% and then move it in this position. Select the orange shape and add a copy in front. Select this copy along with your circle and click the intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. And then you can press Ctrl 0 to zoom in on your entire design. Actually, let's select the flame shape and press Ctrl plus to zoom in on your selection. Before we continue, you can select this circle and delete it. Reselect your flame shape and press Shift and X to swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the fill and apply a linear gradient using this button. Set the angle to 90 degrees and then focus on the gradient sliders to adjust the colors of your gradient. You can start with this one, just double click it, change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 254, 193 and 64. And then double click this other gradient slider. Again, change the color mode to RGB and replace the color with 240, 90 and 35. Now that you've got this gradient, let's save it because you'll need it again later. Just drag this thumbnail inside the swatches panel and your gradient is saved. Make sure that your flame shape is selected and press Ctrl C to copy it. And then press Ctrl F twice which will add two copies of your flame shape in the same place. Make sure that the top copy is selected and replace the fill color with black. And then go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. First of all, check this middle bottom reference point and then set both of these scale sliders to 98%. Click OK to apply the effect and then go to Object and Expand Appearance to expand your effect. Move to the Layers panel to select this black shape along with the other copy of your flame shape and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Press Ctrl and 8 to turn your resulting group of shapes into a single compound pad. Fill this compound pad with white, lower its opacity to 40% and don't forget to change the blending mode to overlay. Now reselect your main flame shape and press again Ctrl F twice to add another two copies of your flame shape. Again, fill the top copy with black and go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Check this middle bottom reference point and set the scale sliders to 95%. Click OK to apply the effect and don't forget to expand it. Select this black shape along with the other copy of your flame shape and click again the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Again, press Ctrl and 8 to turn this group into a compound path. Make it white. Lower the opacity to 20% and change the blending mode to overlay. Reselect your flame shape and add another two copies in front. Fill the top copy with black and go again to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Again, check this point and set both scale sliders to 90%. Apply the effect and expand it. Select the resulting shape with the other copy of your flame shape and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. Press Ctrl and 8 to turn your resulting group of shapes into a new compound path. Fill it with white. Lower the opacity to 10% and change the blending mode to overlay. And then reselect your flame shape and add another two copies in front. Again, select just the top copy and replace the fill color with black and then go again to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. As you did for the previous effects, let's check this point and set the scale sliders to 75%. Apply this effect and expand it. Select this new shape along with the other copy of your flame shape and this time click the intersect button from the Pathfinder panel. 
make sure that the fill is selected and let's apply a linear gradient set the angle to 90 degrees and then focus on the gradient colors you can start with this one so select it hold down the R key and click this white swatch from the swatches panel which will apply the white to your gradient slider repeat the same technique for the other gradient slider keep it selected and lower the opacity to 0% Move to the control panel to lower the opacity of your selected shape to 30% and also change the blending mode to overlay. Now you'll need this invisible shape from the bottom of the layers panel. So make it visible and drag it to the top. You can use the selection tool to select it and move it somewhat like this. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Keep the copy selected and just apply your saved gradient and set the angle to 90 degrees. Once you're done, return to the layers panel to reselect this black flame. Pick the direct selection tool from your toolbar and use it to select just these two points. Keep in mind that you need to hold down the shift key to add to your selection more than one point. Let's drag these two points 10 pixels down and 5 pixels to the right. Continue with these two points and move them 10 pixels to the right and 5 pixels down. And then select just this point and move it 5 pixels to the left. Reselect this entire black shape and replace the fill color with 193, 39 and 45. And also lower the opacity to 50%. Moving on, you'll need to create a brush. We'll start with an ellipse, so select the ellipse tool from your toolbar and use it to create a 150 by 30 pixels shape. Let's make it black. Use the anchor point tool to turn these two points into sharp points. Continue with the rectangle tool and use it to create a shape that will cover the top half of your black shape. Now select both of these shapes and click the minus front button from the Pathfinder panel. And having the resulting shape selected, let's save it as a brush. Focus on the brushes panel. You can quickly clean up this panel by going to select all unused and click this trash icon. And now having your shape selected, click this button, check the R brush box, click OK. You can keep the settings as they come and click OK to add your brush inside the brushes panel. Once your brush is saved, feel free to remove this shape. Let's continue and select this main flame shape. Go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to 20 pixels and click OK to create this new shape. Let's switch to the Direct Selection tool and first go to Object path and add anchor points and then use the direct selection tool to select this point this one and this one press ctrl and x to cut those paths from your selected path press the delete key to remove the remaining paths and then press ctrl and f to paste those copied paths you need to remove the fill color select the stroke and apply your brush Go to Object, Path and Reverse Path Direction, which will adjust the orientation of the applied brushes. Next, go to Object, Path and Outline Stroke, which will turn your brushes into vector shapes. Select the fill and just apply your saved gradient. Set the angle to 90 degrees. And then press Ctrl C and Ctrl F to add copies of your selected shapes in the same place. Press Ctrl and 8 to turn these two copies into a single compound path. Replace the linear gradient with a flat color. We'll make it gray. You can press Ctrl M plus to zoom in on this gray compound path. Then go to Edit, Preferences and General. Make sure that the keyboard increment is set to only one pixel and click OK. Also disable the snap to grid. Make sure that your gray compound path is still selected and press Ctrl C and Ctrl F twice which will add two copies in the same place. 
Keep this front copy selected and press the down arrow key three times, which will move your selection three pixels down. Now hold down the shift key to add to your selection the other copy and click the minus front button from the pathfinder panel. Turn the resulting group of shapes into a new compound pad. Fill it with white. Lower the opacity to 40% and change the blending mode to overlay. Reselect your gray compound pad and press again Ctrl F twice to add another two copies in front. Select the front copy. This one is to be moved 7 pixels down using the arrow key. Again select both copies, click this button, turn the group into a compound pad, make it white, lower the opacity to 20% and change the blending mode to overlay. Then reselect your gray compound pad and add another two copies in front. Again select the front copy and let's move it 12 pixels down. Select both copies, click this same button, turn the group into a compound pad, make it white, lower the opacity to 10% and don't forget to change the blending mode to overlay. And then reselect your gray compound pad and add one more copy. Keep it selected and let's move it 8 pixels up. Select both of these copies. Again click this button and turn the group into a compound pad. Select the fill and replace the color with 193, 39 and 45. And don't forget to lower the opacity to 50%. Once you're done, you can press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire design. And let's create the background. Select the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Use it to create a shape which will cover your entire artboard. Click again these two buttons to center your shape. Select the fill and replace the color with 48, 20 and 100. You can right click this shape and go to arrange and send to back to move it behind the rest of the shapes that make up your logo. Actually you can go to the layers panel and lock this shape to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident. And then reselect your main flame shape and focus on the appearance panel. Start by adding a second fill using this button. Let's select the bottom one and make it black. Go to Effect, Path and Offset Path. Set the offset to minus 15 pixels and click OK. Make sure that your black fill is still selected and let's go again to Effect, but this time to Distort and Transform and Transform. We'll use this Move Vertical slider to move the selected fill 30 pixels down. Click OK. Go again to Effect, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 15 pixels and click OK to blur your black fill. And then return to the appearance panel to lower the opacity of this black fill to 50% and change the blending mode to soft light. Keep focusing on the appearance panel and let's add one more fill. Move it below the rest of the fills. Keep it selected and make it white. Lower the opacity to 40% and change the blending mode to overlay and then go to effect, distort and transform and transform. Check this middle bottom reference point and then scale your fill to 110%. Click OK to apply this effect and now let's add some text. Select the type tool from your toolbar and focus on the control panel to set the settings for the text that you're about to add. We'll use the Bakar font, increase the size to 70 pixels and just click on your artboard to type in your text. Press the escape key when you're done to easily switch to the selection tool. Let's remove the text color and add a new fill for your text using this same button. Keep the new fill selected and just apply your saved gradient and set the angle to 90 degrees. Return to the appearance panel to add a second fill for your text. Keep it selected and let's adjust the applied gradient. Select this color and make it white. Also lower the opacity to 
select this other gradient slider and make it white get back to the appearance panel to lower the opacity of this fill to 75 percent and change the blending mode to overlay and then go to effect path and offset path set the offset to minus two pixels click ok to apply the effect and with this final touch your design is complete i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial Remember to hit that like button as it lets me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.